You said we don't have a chaser, but I have a chaser. <laughs> I love it. Cheers, hey, guys. Cheers. This is by Joe. Gabe. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to a very, very special Beijing episode of Fun Grows Food. An ancient episode. Shout out to Lost Play Tour. We're here with some friends, Fiona and Nicole. A hutong, basically this alleyway that we are in, is actually a Mongolian word, which means water well alley. So a lot of communities back in the day in Beijing would set up their homes with a water well in the middle of it. And it's just beautiful. We're gonna see a lot of families that have been here for generations. So recent studies show that there are more than 5,000 hutongs. They were first found in the 1200s, but mostly they were torn down in the 60s to make room for the subway. All right, basically guys, we are going on a food crawl with our local Beijing friends, and we're about to be experiencing kind of the old style of living in Beijing that's actually still very popular and still a lot of people live in them. Hutong food, food crawl, crawl, let's go. So do, do you live in a nice remodeled hipster hutong? The reason why I chose to be in a hutong was I really wanted to experience the life and know the neighbors around me. That neighborhood feel like, hey, ni hao zao. You know, we'd say all of that stuff. Good morning, where are you going? And they care about you. So you're saying that you got a strong sense of community out here. I do, in the hutong. So over here, we're gonna meet the drivers. So you guys can say ni hao to our drivers yeah, over here. Yeah, right yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be riding tuk-tuks from stop to stop. Yeah. So hey, we got the hutong bodega right behind yes. us. They're still using an abacus to calculate things. Wow. Thailand kind of popularized the tuk-tuk like that cart, but it's in Chinese it's called a uh, du du chu. See, because it makes that sound. Yeah, du 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 du. One of the only ABCs I know that went to Beijing to pursue a front facing in front of camera career. I guess I like the attitude here because it's so embracing. It kind of reminds me of New York, right? It doesn't matter where you're from, what culture, what race you are. If you buy and you contribute, you speak Chinese, right? And you're and you're giving back, then welcome. So over here we're going to try uh, the most famous thing in Beijing, Jia Jiang Mian, which directly translates to fried sauce noodles. Over here the chef is a perfectionist. He hand rolls the dough and he hand cuts them every single morning. And the sauce has to have like a perfect consistency. So it's our favorite Jia Jiang Mian restaurant. Andrew, you love Jia Jiang Mian. I love Jia Jiang Mian. Specifically, actually... I feel like you like Shandong style Jia Jiang Mian. We got the answer, it comes from Beijing. <laughs> we are the first stop at the Hutong, Hutong Jia Jia Mian. So basically the sauce here is made with thick broad bean paste along with a little bit of soy sauce. And on top of it, we have some Chinese garnish and inside we have some pork. Pour all the sauce into your noodles. Use your chopsticks to make sure everything is incorporated. And then you can stand for the condiments. The cucumber, radishes, celery, and mangoes. This is my favorite, favorite. This is their homemade ghost pepper paste. Oh, so, gosh. Well, in Chinese, it's called pang deng long jiang. It's a new means, thing. We're going with the ghost peppers. Yeah. Hey, Andrew, this ain't the emperor's jia jia mint, okay? The oil right here is citron peppercorn extract oil. So citron peppercorn gives you that numbing flavor, right? The Beijing style is close to the Shandong style, but it's not the same. Mm. Well, what's not the same? The flavor of the, the bean paste. I think it's definitely uh, better quality. Like, you can tell with the bean paste. It's just not so pungent and strong. Jiajiangmian is one of those dishes where every province, maybe even every city has a specific version. Basically, the more south in China you go, the jiajiangmian is gonna get less black and more like red. Usually I'm eating this with ground pork, but I really cherish the pieces of pork in here. Yeah. I think they, they put some type of oil with the bean paste. It kind of just neutralizes the strong flavor from the bean. Um, usually when I eat jiajiangmian, it just sprouts a cute Cucumber, but here it has this uh, red radish neutralizing. This was one of my favorite Tajamian experiences I've ever had in my life. Next up, we're gonna try Mongolian barbecue. On to the next spot. By the way, I mean, just because you live in a hutong, it doesn't mean you're like poor, right? For people like us, regardless if you want to call us like foreigners, expats, we kind of buy into it, we want to move into it. The rent that we pay is like two times more than like the granny next door who's been living there for like a long, long time. The reason 
why we love this place is because they use their secret family recipe marinades to marinate their meat before they serve it. The olden days, it was used to be cooked in like a helmet, like a iron helmet of the Mongolian soldiers. We'd go into a yurt, they'd sing, we'd dance around, put the hadas on our necks, but I guess that we're just gonna get down and dirty into the meat. Hey, we just did a Mongolian food episode with Tam. Shout out to Yao Daji, Yao Daji. Two types of meat over here. They come in the same marinade, but the beef comes with some red onions and the lamb has spring onions. Hell oh, yeah. A while too. Hell yeah. Flavor, you guys can use the condiments as well. Mongolian beef, the real one. Mmm. Wow. That's a hell of good. Oh, those spices are different. Mm. I'll tell you guys how to use the condiments for Mongolian barbecue. So first one is chili pepper, of course. Um, and the second one is cumin. And the last one over here is bread with crushed peanuts. Uh, get a scoopful of each condiment, put it in your bowl, mix it, and dip your cooked veggies or meat inside. Some of these spices look a thousand years old. I love that everybody else eating at these restaurants are like true Lao Beijing, like Hutong people. They're as real as you can get. They're not, you know, trying to impress anyone. All right, here's a eggplant. Mm. Oh, that cumin is strong. Wow. It totally changes the flavor when you dip it in. I have to use your own. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh, I'm actually really upset by the lamb. So actually the Mongolian grills in the mall are actually not fully fake. Mongolian lamb. Mm. It's kind of gamey, right? Yeah. That dish on its own is definitely one of the best things I ate in Beijing so far. Specifically the lamb. Wow. It's actually halal lamb. So where like the blood is drawn from the animal before they cook it, that's why you get like a pure taste. Mongolian culture, I think, is so widespread that it's not even mentioned anymore. Right. You know what I mean? It almost just became part of Chinese culture. Yeah. They say that you don't really take over China. China just absorbs you. Right. All right, guys, we're gonna eat a little bit more off the grill, but we gotta go to the next spot. These fatty pieces are so good. Ah, oh, this is fire! We're going to a Muslim dive bar, which sounds a little bit weird because Muslim people don't drink or smoke. But when you go in there, you guys will see people like drinking, screaming, smoking. So over there, we're going to try what I like to call Beijing's ultimate hangover cure. And then we're going to sample some traditional Chinese spirit called Baijiu. So this girl got a pigeon on her shoulder. Whoa. So in the Hutongs, Fiona, you're saying that people like to just show their birds off, like just flex their birds. Yeah. Bird flexing and cricket fighting or grasshopper fighting. Oh, snap. Yo, yo, and you know what it is, man? You're just seeing like some elements of like rural China come at you and I yeah. love it. Shout out to Fuji <laughs> Modern China, but this is all, today hey. is all about Lao Beijing. Do, do. going to try my favorite dish in Beijing. I'm not even joking. I, if I could eat this every day, I will. It's called men ding rou bing. So men ding means like doornails. Have you guys been to the Forbidden City? There are like red gates, big red gates with like golden doornails. Yeah. yeah. Ones. If you guys know, a lot of Chinese food actually is kind of like the characters. I feel like there's such history behind it. Like, you know how like a regular jiaozi looks? That's supposed to look like the ancient ingot. There's a bunch of Lao Pao's out there. So basically, this is a thick, juicy beef patty with Miss Ginger, oh garlic, onion, and chives, oh and it's wrapped in wheat dough. And over at this place, they pan fry this for half an hour. Whoa. So it's like super crunchy on the outside and super juicy on the inside. You guys have to peel the dough open to let it air because it's very hot. And okay. then according to your taste, you can put in some like black vinegar or chili. Munding robing. Wow. Whoa. 
Mm. There's something special about that actually. When you said that they are pan fried for 30 minutes, I can tell because the bottom is super crispy and chewy. It tastes like a way to hold. Mmm. But but even better because it has more stuff in it. Ooh, you guys already know about this, I'm assuming. The alcohol percentage can vary from like 30 to 70, and it's a good palate cleanser. There's no chaser, guys. You said we don't have a chaser, but I have a chaser. <laughs> I love it. Cheers, hey, guys. Cheers. This is by Jill. Gambe. Woo! Oh man. Ah! It was really good with the bunion rolling. Yeah. It's so All right, I'm gonna watch it now with the pita dofu. Okay. Pita dofu, the eggs are not actually a thousand years old. They just look a thousand years old. What's ma dofu? A fermented tofu? Is this? Y'all give me that. That's a nice little, like, pear you have going on. Ma dofu. Ooh, it's pretty. Ooh. Oh, wow. Mm. No funk. Yeah. yeah. No cheese. A little sour. A little savory. This is a stewed lamb spine. Wow. Yang shansu. Mm. Oh my god. Mm. That's so tender. Yeah. That's like oxtail almost. Yeah. David, you don't know mixologist. I just put ma tofu on the yang shansu. Mmm. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Get in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No regard for the kwaizu. <laughs> no Lao pa. Lao pa. Lao pa. Eating with Justin Kim in 90 seconds. Kaiser! Come on, oh. it's a mukbang. Come on, let's go. Hit him with a shot of baiju. Oh! Oh, oh that's really good. Mm. Give me some real descriptions of how the baiju taste. Did it burn? It's really sweet. That's not for my palate. <laughs> People didn't know I used to live in China for a little bit in Beijing, but I had all these characters, right? One of your uh, classic characters that I think was the first time people had seen it on YouTube was a old Beijing chef. Yeah. <laughs> I've been informed by Nicole that this is a 3.5 ranked public toilet in a hutong, making it the best public hutong toilet. Hey, guys, actually, this is 3.5. That is super clean. Look. Ah. Oh, you hear their knees crack? Yeah. This is tight. This is just a vehicle. This is China. This is a family actually. Yo, this is a family. Oh. It's a family. Come on, this is bro. Yeah. Very Chinese. Wow, ah, bird cages. They love Yo, birds. Bro. You know what I should have? I should have a gigantic calligraphy bush and just be writing on the ground right now like Tony Learn. here is spring pancakes and it's a traditional Beijing style New Year dish. So Beijingers would get get around family and friends and make these spring pancakes and eat this for a good New Year and a good harvest. There aren't a lot of pancake places left in Beijing because it just takes up a lot of time and effort to make these. Yeah. So they bring it from the factory but over here they only use the ingredients that they would use for their family. So you know it's like yeah. very made with love. So you split these into two. Oh wow. Because the things come in pairs. Like this and you put the crispy side down. So not, okay so yeah. it's got two layers so you mm -hmm. open it up like that. Pocket. Like a pita. <laughs> Boom. Pita fajita. Well, I mean, I would compare it to you guys if you guys have been to like, you know, typical Chinese restaurant Mushu, you yeah. know, the Mushu pork yeah. dish, right? So you put the crispy side down on your plate or on your hands and you put in whatever filling you'd like. This is a traditional filling for the pancakes it's called reunion dish in Chinese. So mm. bean sprouts, leeks, glass noodles, oh. tofu skin, wood ear mushrooms, and scrambled eggs. Oh, Hell yeah. So yeah, good. and those are scrambled eggs and spring onions sauteed with soybean paste. Over here, we got Kung Pao chicken. We, all, we already know that this is from like Sichuan province. But over here, they make the best Kung Pao in town. It just has a great balance of sweet, salty, spicy, and sour. Mm. Trending. 
Beijing. It's a couple years. Mm. It's legit. Okay. If you guys know about provincialism in China, like the provinces can be so different sometimes. They don't even care about each other because they don't even feel like the same type of people. And the food's different, the language is different, the holidays are different. Right here is Jinjiang Rou Su. It's this Beijing like, pork strips. What is this? This is actually <clears throat> tofu skin. So you take one slice of tofu skin, you put a couple slices of pork. It's also marinated with some sweeter soybean paste and a little bit of spring onion. And you just like roll it like a tobacco. This is it. Chicken True gummer, man. Yo, I'm going in on the on the kung pao. Kung pao is actually really good. Uh, should I get one more? Yeah. Mm. Cheers, you guys. You're so glad to see you. You don't live in the hutong next to a wagas? Come, come visit me again. I'll, I'll give you my uh, version of the hutong tour. Uh, yeah. This is a very old school drink that people like who were young in the 80s grew up drinking. The best way to compare this, Sprite with a little bit of orange juice. I'm about to make a double double decker here. Oh, so I'm yeah. going to fold it over, right? And then I have some surface space right here. Kung Pao Ji Ding on. Oh, you guys. I, dude, I, we should have been layer. eating this this whole week, man. We've been eating Look at this. Kale, avocado. Triple layer, all four. Actually, not bad. That's very light, eggy, and vegetarian. And then you kind of have your more salty, spicier flavors here. Oh my gosh. La the little vegetables have so much flavor. Yeah. Like I'll just eat an onion, and the onion will be more oniony than an onion in the States. Yeah. But hey, how's this nectar? Oh, the Arctic Ocean. What, is this uh, Hawthorne? Yeah. Oh. Everybody, what was your favorite? What was your favorite out of these dishes? Uh, the, the traditional chun bean. Typically, I think this dish was my favorite. Yeah, yeah. He thai. Yeah, just he thai. I really like the pork and the he thai put together because you had your kind of saltiness and um, stronger flavors from this balanced out with this. I think that, you know, the easiest way to describe Beijing is that it has the vibes. <clears throat> and this place got the vibes for real. Oh, God. you guys we are ending off our trip peace Zajian. Zajian, Zajian. peace to the drivers the shijis and uh, basically we are ending at a cool vibey bar in a hutong so I want to give a huge shout out to everybody who's joining us thank you to Fiona thanks Yo. for having Stop me up. guys thank thanks you to Nicole thank you thank you for what, joining guys what, you have to do this tour shout out to Lost Plates what's your where do they find out more about it Lostplate.com, come on our website. Woo! Lostplate.com. Okay, trust me, we never would have been able to do any of this without the tour. I wouldn't have found myself here. My favorite thing about living in a hutong is um, I'm surprised every single day. Nicole, you showed me all these places I've never been to, so that means I gotta keep adventuring, man. I think sometimes life in the big city, especially amongst the, the money class, is so cold and it's like kind of status driven, which is, you know, how a lot of modern society works. But in the hutongs, man, they're still keeping it the old ways. It's all about community. We're coming live from the hutongs in Beijing. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.